Good afternoon and welcome to International Championship Wrestling. This afternoon we're going to have matches featuring Sailor Moondog White, the Rougeau Brothers, Gina Reno Jr., and a special interview with Bruno Sammartino, the living legend. Also, much, much more. So stay tuned for more exciting International Championship Wrestling. If your favorite radio station isn't what it used to be, it's time for a new favorite. Light 92.5 FM plays the classics from yesterday, today, and tomorrow in a clean, uncluttered environment. No hype, no gimmicks, no endless chatter. Just light rock with less talk, the way it should be. Judge for yourself. Turn on the light at 92.5 FM. It's a Chapter 11 bankruptcy sale now going on at Bigelow Furniture in Salem, New Hampshire. All regular in-store items, plus hundreds of warehouse items and one-of-a-kind discontinued items, have been drastically reduced to raise cash to satisfy creditors. Durable Herculon sofa and chair, only $2.99. Recliners from $1.19. Three-piece sectionals for $4.99. All wood bunk beds, wood parts only for $129. Just a few examples of store-wide savings at Bigelow Furniture, Route 28 in Salem, New Hampshire. You know, when I first put my trio together, I wanted the best musicians I could find. I didn't care what their name was, what they looked like. I wanted the best. Job service helped me find them. I wanted a career position with some guys I could relate to. Job service helped me. I just needed a job, man. Employers, use our 24-hour hotline. Fill your job needs. Call now. Today, small-town Sheila Levine moves to big city New York in search of life. Hi, it's Sheila, your roommate. Happiness. Mother, she is an actress. Oh, my God! And a husband. How do you feel about being honest? Honesty is the best policy. Okay, you want to make it? What? Sheila Levine is dead and living in New York. This afternoon at 1 on TV 7. Well, it's the spoiler moving out against Roger Bond. And uh, Bond trapped in those ropes. And the spoiler punishing him with the flat of the foot. Let me check with Ole. Uh, you and I were both talking about the fact we were going to see Wahoo and Jay Youngblood today. And, and Jay Youngblood comes out here and tells me that he, Wahoo got a wire saying uh, the match was canceled. Well, I'm with Jay. I don't understand uh, what the deal is there either. Uh, but I'm, as Jay said, he'd be willing to take anybody as a partner, and I'm sure we may be able to find one for him. Paul Ellering is uh, here. Uh, uh, Wahoo McDaniel somehow or another received a telegram, Mr. Ellering, saying that the match had been canceled. Jay Youngblood is here and is perfectly willing to... Uh, uh, take a partner and go against your road warrior. I find it very interesting indeed. He's probably at home weaving something or trying to have a powwow. You know how, well, you know how they are. Uh, supposing, uh, what, what about if uh, young get hey, uh, we're talking about having your road warriors go against everybody, and I know that they're invincible. Nobody could beat them. How about taking young blood and maybe, uh, King Kong Bundy as a partner? Bundy? Huh. You gotta be joking. A lot of people will admit the man, but I won't. And on television, a match with Bundy? Well, that's a main event in Madison Square Garden or anywhere in the world, the Omni. We'll find out, won't we? Not Bundy, no way. Well, all right. How about, uh, say, Ronnie Garvin? Garvin? Well... Uh... Garvin's probably looking for eggs in a cuckoo clock. He's off his rocker. He's probably out in the other county by now, not Garvin. I'll give you a good one. How about Brad Armstrong? Uh, Armstrong. No, no, I happened to, as I was coming through the corridor, I saw down the other end of the corridor, he was talking to his dad. <laughs> I find it interesting his dad couldn't talk back to him, though. <laughs> no way. Ellering, you're trying to tell us how great the road warriors are. We mentioned everybody. I mean, is there going to be somebody they're going to finally agree to? How about, uh, how about Pez Watley? No, how about Jason Walker? 
I think Jason Walker is a man of impeccable character, a man who has shown his ability many times, many oh, weeks. Now, Walker doesn't have that kind of experience, and uh, but certainly, what about Pez Watley? Watley. Well, I've always wanted to get him anyway. Let's let it be, Watley. If he'll accept it, we'll take on young blood and Watley. <laughs> Well, I feel very confident that they will indeed accept it. There's no question in my mind that uh, knowing Pistol Pass and knowing uh, Jay Youngblood, that should be a good combination. Well, this looks like a great match. Uh, certainly Youngblood ready to go after the Road Warriors. And with a partner like Pistol Pass Walker, he couldn't do himself any harm there. I, I, I think we're going to be looking at an exciting match. And we may see that Mr. Ellering uh, is going to lose a little bit of that confidence. And maybe the Road Warriors are going to lose their belts. Could be indeed. And it is uh, the spoiler now. Has uh, Roger Bond in trouble, the spoiler. Up on those top ropes and the spoiler crashes down across the top of the head. He's got the claw. He has got the claw. And uh, Ellering in there attention away from uh, Roger Bond and it is now referee Scrappy McGowan ordering him to release that hold well there's no question about it certainly the spoiler is the victor in this match and now here's a special word coming up next ladies and gentlemen exclusive interview with the living legend of professional wrestling Bruno San Martino any group, schools, or organization in our viewing audience that would like to raise any funds for their organization may do so by writing to International World Wrestling Exposition Building, 239 Park Avenue, Portland, Maine, 04103. A welcome again to International Wrestling. I'm Sam Meneker. This is my colleague, Mike Mittman, and we have a great card for you today. We'll see Larry Zabisco, luscious Johnny Valiant, and we've got a lot of surprises in store for all the wrestling fans tonight, Sam. We sure have. Now, fans, you've been hearing us talking the last few weeks about a big surprise, and we have a great surprise because here we have the living legend, Bruno Sammartino. Sam, how are you? Uh, I, I can't help but be thrilled. We have a capacity audience here, and the way they're cheering you is really wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what, Sam. It's been a while since I've been involved in wrestling, you know, and uh, it's great to see the fans and hear them again. It's a great thrill. You know, Bruno, I can't... Uh, maybe I shouldn't bring this up, but I think, I think it's called for. You know, for the last three or four weeks, we've had uh, a wrestler by the name of Larry Zabisco here. And all he did was blast you. Well, it doesn't surprise me. I understand he's been saying that he's the one who's retired me. You know, about five years ago, a guy by the name of Hanson broke my neck and went around saying he retired San Martino. San Martino came back and beat Hanson just about in every city that he met him. Zabisco never retired me. Uh, I, when I retired, I chose to retire on my own. And uh, because after 20 years, I, th I thought it was time. And as far as anything that he has to say, as far as I'm concerned, Zabisco's always had an incurable disease a lot of people don't know of, and that is he's got constipation of the brains and diarrhea of the mouth, and so I don't know if it. Bruno, I see some signs up. People have signs up calling you the only living legend, and that's wonderful because Zabisco has loudly proclaimed that there is no living legend except him. Well, I've never discredited him as far as his wrestling skills because I know him since he was young, and he was a very, very talented wrestler. And I always said that he could have made it to the top on his own abilities and skills. Unfortunately, like so many others, he was looking for shortcuts, and he took just a cheap way to get there. You know, uh, I recently saw Bruno Sammartino Jr. He's a very fine wrestler. Well, you know, when he turned pro a couple of years ago, I felt that he should get some good experience before he came around. So he was in South America for about seven, eight months. Then I sent him to Japan and Australia for about another five, six months. And he spent the past year through the South and that. 
And I think that uh, he's going to show people that he's ready to face anybody. That's really wonderful. You know, Bruno, I remember when you were in Australia, you were the international champion because you defeated not only uh, champions in the United States, but all over the world. Well, I've held a few titles in my day, but the biggest thrill for me wasn't just the titles. It was the, the thrill of going to the arenas to listen to the fans cheer and to give you the encouragement in that rank that... It, it made a to me I've had my neck broken back broken but to me it was all worth it because to go in that ring and to listen to the pe people cheer for and applaud you it just made everything and it, I, I won't lie to you I miss it because it uh, it was a great part of my life it was just great it's wonderful to hear the cheers of these fans we have some of the finest <laughs> finest fans in the world. well believe me I've always appreciated it and I've always respected the fans tremendously and uh, you can only repay them by doing the best you could in the ring and i think i've always tried to do that you know bruno beside being the great wrestler that you are you're a student of wrestling you you've studied wrestlers you've seen wrestlers come up from the bottom and get to the very top i still get a great kick out of watching a newcomer to go into that ring and watch his moves his skills and you form an opinion as to how far he is really from getting to the top of that ladder and i'll tell you we got a lot of great coming young wrestlers and i I foresee in the very near future some really tremendous, tremendous caliber wrestlers, Sam, because as you know, as you travel around the country, we really have some young, fast, powerful, good-looking athletes coming up. Yes, you know, we're very proud of the fact that we have international wrestling and mostly proud of the fact that you have joined us. And we thank you very much. I'm happy to be here, uh, Sam. And if anyone is happy, it's our wonderful fans. Thank you. Thank you very much. We heard from the living legend Bruno. Now let's hear from the new living legend Larry Zabisco in action. Ladies and gentlemen, in the corner to my right from Gary, Indiana, weighing in at 223 pounds, Larry Winter. His opponent weighing 230 pounds from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Larry Zabisco. One fall with a 10-minute time limit. Well, now, Larry Zabisco, of course, this is some, this is part of his defensive strategy or something. He's getting his opponent awfully nervous by not getting in there. Well, that's, that is strategy. He's a very arrogant guy, and he likes to just like, you know, this guy loves to humiliate his opponent, uh, Sam, and he will do his best to first to aggravate him and then humiliate him best he can. Well, I believe he is getting in. He certainly... I'm sure has no fear of getting in there because even though he's unpopular, he is a very tough wrestler. Well, you know, Sam, I, you know, I, I think you know my feelings because of everything that's happened, but this guy could have been one of the greatest. He was one of the best wrestlers out of Lehigh High School in Pittsburgh, went on a scholarship to Penn State. He could have had the world by a tail. Instead, all he got is a lot of hate from fans because of uh, his behavior. Some of the fans are on ringside. I guess, I don't know if it's visible on camera, but they have signs with the name Bruno on them. Now, they're in the referee's hold, arm and neck hold up against the ropes. And uh, Larry Zabisco stepped back. I expect him to throw a punch in there. Oh, he, he's cute. He'll do all kinds. He's confident, I guess. He's a very confident man. He feels that he can have things under control with this guy. So Larry Winter uh, just... Oh, he tripped him up. You know, Bruno, the thing that irked me, and I'm sure it irked a lot of the fans and a lot of our viewers, every time... Uh, you explained it when we spoke earlier, but this man just disparaged your character and ability. It, uh, it was uncalled for, I believe, but that's his style, I guess. I don't know. Seems to be a very bitter man. Why, I don't know, uh, Sam, because he had everything going for him at one time, and sometimes greed, I don't know what it is, uh, what desperation it causes people to do what they do. Now, there he goes, tripping the man down, and the guy falls down, and he's 
showing us just like it's a cinch, not to throw it. Just no respect whatsoever for an opponent. The fans are booing him, but uh, I don't think it, he minds it too much. He moves around very carefully. Larry Winter is, uh, seems to be the aggressor here. Now they're in that play. Uh oh, he's out with an armbar hold. Larry Zabisco with an armbar hold. Punishing Winter. Forcing him to the mat. The referee asks if he wants to give up, but he said no. Zabisco putting more and more pressure on the back of that elbow. He's trying to bend that arm the opposite direction. Well, I'm, it bends. I'm surprised so far that he hasn't driven his knee on the uh, upper arm in the back of his head, because that's one of the things he likes to do, Zabisco. Take a double wrist lock and then drive the knee uh, by the, the elbow area, which he has hurt a few people with that maneuver. He's pressing Winter to the mat. Winter refusing to give up. that arm he's got winter in trouble he's working on that arm now pulls him by the hair into the rope throws him in the rope a knee lift oh no it's the abdominal stretch and it's beautifully applied and well you you said that the man had wrestling ability And he certainly proved it, uh, Bruno. No question about it. He has plenty of it, uh, Sam. He put that abdominal stretch on. I, I just couldn't believe it, how quickly he did it. Yes, he did. Only living legend, Mittman! Uh, I guess the fans heard that comment. Ladies and gentlemen, in four minutes and 30 seconds, the winner the new living legend, Larry Zabisco. Coming up next, the son of the living legend, in action, Bruno San Martino Jr., right after this commercial break. I just bought a terrific used car, and I didn't use these, or this, or these. I just picked up the phone and dialed 1-800-AGENT-88. Agent 88. I told him exactly what kind of car I wanted. He checked his computer inventory. Pretty smart, huh? Well, he got a match, and I got my car. And it didn't cost me a cent. Call 1-800-AGENT-88 today. In New Hampshire, call Agent 44. Call Agent 88. He does the legwork free. Tis the season for Christmas values at Hood Plaza in Derry, the one-stop shopping plaza for all your holiday needs. At Hood Plaza, you'll save on brand-name fashions, hardware, decorating supplies, appliances, books, gardening supplies, and festive foods. Hood Plaza has it all. Low prices, acres of free parking, most stores are open every night until Christmas, and your major credit cards are always welcome. So come to Hood Plaza in Derry, your one-stop shopping area for outstanding holiday value. Hood Plaza is your Merry Christmas place. Severe burns, extended convalescence, premature infancy. Today, these and many other serious medical conditions are being treated successfully with the help of flotation care products. Unfortunately, not everyone can afford the care they need. That's why the National Flotation Health Care Foundation has set up this telephone hotline. If someone you know is in critical need of a flotation health care product, please give a call. We'd like to help. TV50 Sports returns to Manchester for another year of fast-paced New Hampshire College Penn Men basketball. Hi, this is Doug Brown. I hope you'll be with Dave Long and me for what should be an exciting schedule. New Hampshire College has a full returning squad from last year's 18-win season, and they'll face a tough New England Collegiate Conference schedule, including Sacred Heart and Bridgeport, featuring 7-foot, 6-inch Manute Ball. New Hampshire College basketball premieres November 26th at 8 o'clock with the Invitational Tournament Finals. With TV50 Sports, you'll always have the best seats in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, in the corner to my right, 
weighing in at 237 pounds from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Phil Watson. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent, weighing in at 240 pounds from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we welcome to International Wrestling, the son of one of the most famous wrestlers who ever entered the ring, Welcome, Bruno Sammartino Jr. What an ovation, ladies and gentlemen. What an ovation. And Bruno, I know I could just feel you, your fatherly pride in your son. Very proud of him for the short time he's been at it. He's doing very well with them. What a terrific physique. Terrific moves there, takedowns. Hard bar hold now by Bruno Sammartino Jr. And Watson's in trouble right now. Oh, he rears back on that arm. Well, Watson. Well, excuse me, Sam. Go ahead. You know, he, he just turned 21 years of age, and he's on a bench press with 490 pounds. <laughs> that's like a little bragger, but that, that's a lot of weight for a kid that age. And look at him move. Boy, he crashes Watson to the mat. Again, what a terrific takedown. What an arm drag. He drops across that arm. And Watson, I'm sure, Cannot do much against this great young wrestler who now is stretching that arm. He's got both feet, uh, one against the head, one against the... Uh oh he's back to the arm bar hold. I guess you trained with him many times, Bruno. You know, he started sampling him up when he was six years of age. He's one of these kids who always knew what he wanted. And then he wrestled to uh, grade school, junior high. He wrestled to high school, and he trained with myself. And he used to train with Larry when we were in better terms from the time he was like about 12 years old. So he's been wrestling all his life, but 21 is really a veteran. He's putting the pressure on Watson, not giving Watson a chance. Uh oh a punch in the midsection. Well, it's side of the head. And now Watson getting rough, pulls it by the hair, punches him. Watson realizes he cannot out-wrestle Bruno Sammartino Jr., so he's trying to rough it up, hoping to win with these Unorthodox tactics, a punch to the chest. Oh, a good block. Oh, man, what a comeback. What a comeback. Uh-oh, watch this now. He'll have no trouble with the weight. He's, oh, look at this. He crashes to the mat. He was doing a big press there, pressing that man up. Pressed it right up. Well, he does that with about 325 pounds when he trains, so. A uh, human body, of course, a lot more awkward, you know, to, to do, but uh, he certainly does have the power to do it. A reverse armbar now against the elbow. Watson trying to get up. Bruno hanging on to that arm. He throws him into the ropes. Oh, Watson jumps over him, but oh, there it goes again. Oh, man, what a body slam. Yes, what a takedown. You know, uh, Bruno, I've heard from wrestlers around the country that your son is, in fact, they call him the fastest man on land or sea. And I can certainly believe it after watching him in action. Well, thank you, Sam. Coming from here, it's a real comment because you've seen them all. <laughs> and uh, I not honestly say uh, with that sound, he's a little too precious, but I am very proud of him. I think, as I said, for a young fellow, 21 years of age, he's showing uh, great signs of, uh, uh, of great things to, to, to come ahead for him. Fans, remember you're watching international wrestling. We have a tremendous crowd, a capacity crowd in our arena. I know all you fans at home are enjoying it. Here's uh, Watson with punches to the face. 
Uh, vicious uppercut, but a quick retaliation by Bruno Sammartino Jr. He slams him into the turnbuckle. Oh, a big bear hug. A big bear hug. Man. Bruno, he might, with his power, he might have broken some ribs on Watson. I hope not. I don't, I don't like to see anybody get hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of that match in four minutes and 38 seconds, Bruno Sammartino Jr. How would you like to enjoy this old-fashioned Christmas magic all during the coming holiday season? Walking Roger Whittaker now offers you one of the most beautiful Christmas albums ever recorded. And here it is, the world's most beautiful Christmas songs by Roger Whittaker. in just $8.98 for record album, $9.98 for 8-track tape or cassette to Christmas favorites. Box 5000, Derry, 03038. You'll love these 20 Christmas favorites this year and every year or money back. Not sold in stores and this announcement will end without any notice. Write this address down now and send to Christmas favorites. Box 5000, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Moondog Sailor White as he enters the ring and he'll be doing battle against a fellow by the name of Reggie Rampone. A young guy trying to make a name for himself in the professional wrestling ranks, but when you go against a man like Moondog Sailor White, you got your hands full. White throws him into the corner. Moondog pushes him back again. We see up there in the right-hand corner. Again, I know I say that every week, but probably one of the greatest Canadian wrestlers ever to come out of Canada. Edward Carpentier. Oh, look at that devastating blow. Down goes Rampone. Blue Dog applies the boots. Referee gives him a warning. This man shows no mercy. None at all. And a little illegal tactic there, a little punch. Knee lift, down goes Rampone. Referee keeps warning him, but as you can see, the moon dog, he listens to no one. I wonder just how much he misses his bone. We haven't seen him carrying it in quite a while. Here he goes playing pressure to the pressure points on Rampone's neck. Referee exiting Rampone. Surprised that referee isn't checking that a little closer to see just where those fingers are set. There he takes him down, fly him there, takes him over. Notice that little, just that little pull up with the hair. Uh, he just knows how to apply himself so well we're getting away with the rules, it's unbelievable. Referee warning him, keep that fist open. What a beautiful face, huh? Oh, boy. Rampone trying to get out. 
I tell you, that referee got to check that hole. That's just a little bit close to the choke. Moondog applying the pressure. That hole might not seem like much, but when you've got that much pressure, look at that hair, look at that hair. Forearm. Right back to the hair. Chop right across the chest. Down goes Rampone. Forearm to the back. Again. He's just about doing anything at will with this Rampone. Flies a little rope and a little foot. Referee warning him to break. Pushes Moondog back. Rampone getting up very, very slowly. Rampone, a little punch, again, and again, and again. Whoa, he's catching Moondog by surprise right here. He drop kick, back goes Moondog to the corner. Rampone takes him. Moondog reverses it, throws Rampone in. Oh. Moondog picks him up. Just walking around with him like nothing. Tremendous body slam by Moondog. Little kick to the stomach, little one to the throat. Oh, look at this, look at this. Moondog up on the ropes. 327 pounds. Oh. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. What a devastating blow by Moondog Sailor White. As again, he comes out victorious. This is the electrifying voice of Pavarotti, the operatic tenor whose golden voice is so irresistible to all America, he's even been on the cover of time. And in this beautiful treasury, your family can now thrill to this living legend singing 12 world-famous music treasures. You'll enjoy the most beautiful music ever written. You get Pavarotti singing world-famous music treasures from all these renowned operas. get another entire Pavarotti album. Yes, you get the great Pavarotti singing 12 songs the whole world loves. What a joy to listen to these famous songs. And what a glorious way to hear world-famous music treasures. You get both fabulous Pavarotti treasuries. This offer is not in stores. Order yours now. Mail 1498 to Great Music, Box 5000, Derry 03038. You get two record albums, two eight-track tapes, or two cassettes. This special Pavarotti offer will end with no advance notice, so don't delay. Write this address down now. Mail 1498 to Great Music, Box 5000, Derry 03038. That's Great Music, Box 5000, Derry, New Hampshire 03038. The bear is coming. That's right, Ginger the Wrestling Bear, coming at Christmas time to the following locations near you. December 27th, Augusta Main, the Augusta Civic Center at 8 p.m. December 28th, the Portland Expo Building, 8 p.m. December 29th, Rockland, Maine, Rockland High School, 8 p.m. December 30th, Bangor, Maine, the Bangor Auditorium, 3 p.m. The bear is coming soon. Ginger the Wrestling Bear is coming to your area. Be there, see the bear. Here we see one of the brothers of the famous Raymond and Jacques Rougeau. That's Armin Rougeau, the taller one there. And his partner, the son of Gino Brito, Gino Brito Jr. 
and they'll be doing battle against the team composed of Richard Teaser and Ludger Peru. Quick takedown by Brito Jr. Peru tags out, in comes Teaser. Both men, there they lock up. You see over in the right-hand side of your screen there, you seen a moment ago, uh, everybody, everybody kind of watching this match very carefully. Uh, Gino Brito Jr. definitely out to try to live up to his father's reputation. And again, you have Armin Rougeau, and uh, he's got those two fabulous brothers, Raymond and Jacques. Oh, a little take down there. Comes behind him. What a beautiful move by Brito Jr. Caesar looks a little lost there. There's the tag. In comes Armin Rougeau. Armand takes him up, slams him. I tell you, these, these two together, they're very, very smooth together for an up-and-coming young team. I know for a fact that uh, Raymond and uh, Jock, uh, they train with their brother two or three times a week, and they just claim he's going to be sensational. Ludger Peru is in the ring now. Rougeau takes him by the arm, applying a little pressure, turns it around. Nice move. Look at that takedown. What a beautiful, beautiful takedown. Referee breaking. Peru's arm on a rope. Boy, he's picking a lousy time to think about fixing his hair. He's better start worrying about what's going to happen to him here. These, these two guys are full of fire. Headlock applied by Rujo. Applies a little pressure here. Boy, does that ring your ears. Referee checking everything very carefully. Gino Brito just waiting very anxiously to get in the ring. Right now, Rujo doesn't need much help. Look at Peru, down he goes. In comes Brito Jr. Takes him, hip tosses him over. Nice move, takes him down, referee checking the choke. Hole is clean. Teaser trying to get in there, referee warned him to stay in his corner. trying to swing him around, move those legs around. The referee acts with him. He says, no, I'm okay. I think this is the hardest part of, of training a, a youngster uh, is, is to have him have that patience. And you can see that both Rito Jr. and Rougeau, that's one thing that they have. They have the patience. They know how to wear their opponents down. That's very important. Very, very seldom is a match one in a minute. <laughs> Referee checking. Oh, he tried to take Rujo over. Rujo, beautiful stop. Fell down to that one knee, and there was just no way to take him. Oh, little hair by Rujo. That's a little odd. <laughs> Referee's caught him, too, and is telling him, watch that hair. Peru throws him to the ropes. Down goes Peru. There's the tag. In comes Gino Brito Jr. Little forearm to the head. Another. Peru trying to lift him up, but again, there go. He got him. Takes him over. Good move by Brito. Headlock. Brito Jr. gets out. Oh, a little rake to the eyes there. Come on, ref. 
drop kick by Frito Jr. Peru hit the ropes and down he went. Up for the slam. There's the tag, in comes Rujo. I tell you, you really want to see something exciting. You must see that Jacques and Raymond Rujo. They are just unbelievable. That is one match that is nothing but explosives from beginning to end. We turned into a boxing match here. Beautiful arm drag by Rougeau. Again, another arm drag. Referee acts a teaser. Teaser says no. Spins himself around. Peruto looked very anxious to take his partner. Oh, grabbed the trunks, pull Rujo back to the corner. Little double teamwork here. Teaser there, there you get a little uh, unexperienced there. That teaser could have had the referee's attention and Peru could have done just a little bit more damage to Rujo. Some forearms into the turnbuckle. No, no tag, he don't want a tag. Teaser feels he's got him now. Slam, knee to the throat, another. This teaser's a little confidence right now. Hear the crowd in the back going, let's go, let's go. I tell these, these Rougeau brothers, they get that excitement wherever they go. They too later on will be giving you upcoming events in your area. And you'll probably have a very, very good chance of seeing some stars like the Rougeau brothers, Jacques and Raymond. Dino Bravo, Rick Martel, Moondog Sailor White, many, many others. There's the tag. And someone we just seen a few minutes ago, Joe LaDuke. What a fantastic man he is. There's a little hair pulling by teaser, pulls him back in. Four up to the chest. Peru kicking away. Referee pushes Peru back. And you see in the back there, Teaser's got him, and he's just choking the heck out of him there. Here's Peru, shot to the midsection, shot to the head. Referee pushing him back. This time the referee's staying close. Teaser pulls him up again. Peru again goes in there. Both men. Rujo just staggering away, trying to get his composure back. Should be going for the tag. He was a little excited here himself. This is a few shots to Peru. Takes him into the ropes. Drop kick, beautiful flying drop kick by Rujo. Takes him down for the cover. One, two, now you see the way Frito come in there and stop him, fantastic. Frito takes him, throws him in. Look at this, look at this. Fantastic teamwork, fantastic. That's it, that's it. Peru submits, that's the end of the match. Fantastic teamwork by Gito Brino Jr. and Armand Rujo. Two names you'll be seeing around for quite a long time. Stay tuned for more exciting international world wrestling. If we gave two people the same amount of cash and sent one to department stores and the other to the Mill Yard Outlet Mall, the department store shopper would come back with this much. The Mill Yard Outlet Mall shopper would come back with this much. Because brand names at the Mill Yard Outlet Mall are priced 20 to 50% less than at department stores. Come to our grand opening going on right now to see how much fun saving can be. The Mill Yard Outlet Mall is the whole new way to shop. Take Route 111 to Pine Street in Nashua and look for the Mill Yard Chimney. It's a Chapter 11 bankruptcy sale now going on at Bigelow Furniture in Salem, New Hampshire. All regular in-store items, plus hundreds of warehouse items and one-of-a-kind discontinued items, have been drastically reduced to raise cash to satisfy creditors. Durable Herculon sofa and chair, only $2.99. Recliners from $1.19. Three-piece sectionals for $4.99. All wood bunk beds, wood parts only for $129. Just a few examples of store-wide savings at Bigelow Furniture, Route 28 in Salem, New Hampshire. 
There are all kinds of places where kids can get introduced to drugs, like marijuana, alcohol, and cocaine. I'm Michael Landon, and that happened to one of my kids. Oh, she's okay now. But it wasn't easy for me to find out about these drugs. Well, fortunately, that's changed. Pharmacists have volunteered to help parents learn how to prevent drug abuse. Visit your local pharmacy, displaying this sign. A message from Pharmacists Against Drug Abuse. Every Sunday at noon, the best candle pin bowlers from all over New England set them up and knock them down on candle pin stars and strike. Join us for three strings of exciting candle pin competition as bowlers try to climb the ladder toward the big prize money. TV50 Sports puts you right in the middle of the excitement every Sunday at noon on Candle Pin Stars and Strikes. Bill Tardier goes for his second win in a row against former champion Rich Dione. Don't miss the action on Candle Pin Stars and Strikes Sunday at noon only on TV50. Well, we're joining this match in progress. We've seen Moondog Silverweight against Dino Bravo. These two guys have been gunning for each other for such a long, long time. Moondog was one half of the team who took the belts away from Dino Bravo and Tony Guerrero at one time. And boy, oh boy, it's just been something that Bravo's just wanted to get back. Bravo takes Moondog into the ropes, back flips him over. Bravo's going wild here. Look at these fans. Picks him up. Suplex, down he goes. Bravo goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, in the ring. Who is? That's Rick Valentine, the brother of Greg Valentine. Come into the ring and save Moondog. What is this referee doing? There's two men in that ring. Referee is calling the match. That's it. Valentine, the devastating blow to Bravo's head. Bravo goes down. I, I, I just can't figure out what's going on here. Again, Valentine goes to hit. The referee grabs his arm. Referee pulls, looks like a flashlight. Both men pounding away on Bravo. Moondog just holding him there, and Valentine just beating the heck out of him. Look at, where is some help? Anybody? In comes, who is that? Rick Martell. Leo Burke come in the ring to help Bravo, but Bravo's down. He's, he's, he's hurt. He's hurt bad, Bravo. Martell's looking around. Bravo's hurt very, very bad. I'll tell you, this, this thing between Moondog and Bravo goes, goes, goes back for years. I'm, I'm sorry I'm stuttering, but uh, I'm just so excited here. At how bad Bravo's hurt. Martel's in there, the referee. Here comes Frank Bawa, the manager of Andre the Giant. He's coming out. Bravo's definitely hurt bad. He's definitely hurt bad. Leo Burke and, and Rick Martel and the referee, everybody's just looking for help. The crowd is dead silence. This man is definitely hurt. He wants help. Bravo himself is asking for help. Referee is calling it. I guess they're looking for a stretcher. He can't get up. He's hurt bad. I tell you, Moondog Sailor White will go to any, any extreme to prevail. The other referee's coming in the ring, and, and Frank Bawa is trying to get, get Bravo over to the ring, over to the end of the ring. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm just so excited here, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Bravo just shaking away. Martel trying to just tell him, take it easy. He's holding him back. But I really believe that Bravo can't get up. He's hurt bad. That was, that was a flashlight he was beating him with. Look at his face. And comes the ref, and, and Martell is just screaming for some help. Everybody's just standing. Uh, everybody's amazed. Uh, Bravo's down. He's definitely out, and he's down. 
Martel just telling him, just lay down, just lay down, we'll take care of you. Martel is really getting upset. He has, he's looking, I, I believe he's looking for a stretcher. Martel, it looks like he's going to try to pick him up. He's trying to hold him up. He don't want him to lay down. I really can't tell if Bravo is out completely or, or if he's... I, I really, really don't know. He's, Martel is just screaming, give me some help. Burke taking a close look. Looks like he's halfway to, but I really don't believe he can move. I really can't tell if his eyes are open or closed. Everybody is just looking. Everything is, is dead quiet. Boy, they got to get some help in there right away. Looks like they're going to try to pick him up. Yeah, they're going to try to get him over there to the corner. I tell you, that Moondog Sailor White, he's a man that, that actually should be barred from professional wrestling. Him and, and Rick Valentine, but basically Moondog Sailor White. This is something that he has had in his claw against Dino Bravo since they were tag team heavyweight champions. And the man should be suspended and thrown out for, for things like this. This is not professional wrestling. Frank Valwa there, Rick Martel. Martel just not going to leave his side. Bravo's saying something, and, and we can't understand what he's saying, but he's hurt bad. He's definitely hurt bad. That Moondog Sailor White said he would get even with Dino Bravo, and boy, he actually kept his word. But I'll tell you what, you definitely will hear something about this from Dino Bravo. They're just dragging him through there. This man's hurt bad. If your favorite radio station isn't what it used to be, it's time for a new favorite. Light 92.5 FM plays the classics from yesterday, today, and tomorrow in a clean, uncluttered environment. No hype, no gimmicks, no endless chatter. Just light rock with less talk, the way it should be. Judge for yourself. Turn on the light at 92.5 FM. Have you ever compared unfinished furniture to finished furniture? When you do, you'll see how you can own beautiful, quality furniture and save as much as 50%. Put the finishing touches on a microwave cart or stereo cabinet for your loved one. Show you care. Let your work be part of this holiday gift. Computer tables, gun cabinets, desks, rocking chairs. Country Woods has a great selection for the perfect and personal gift. You'll save at Country Woods Unfinished Furniture Outlet, Route 101 Raymond, where you get low prices naturally. You go all out this time of year Like a one-man band of Christmas cheer Your every gift has got to be just right Like the words on every card you write Don't miss the joy, don't miss the joy At the Postal Service, we know it's important for your cards and packages to arrive by Christmas, so please mail early Don't miss the joy, don't miss the joy Mail early this Christmas, don't miss the joy Today, small-town Sheila Levine moves to big city New York in search of life. Hi, it's Sheila, your roommate. Happiness. Mother, she is an actress. Oh, my God. And a husband. How do you feel about being honest? Honesty is the best policy. Okay, you want to make it? What? Sheila Levine is dead and living in New York. This afternoon at 1 on TV7. The international tag team belts with Len Kojak Shelley, another wrestler you might not be familiar with. I remember Len Shelley. Going back about four or five years ago. And after that, he got talked into doing what he's doing now. Guys like Tarzan Tyler and all that. He changed his style completely. Gained a few pounds. Now that you've dropped the name, where is Len Shelley? Len Shelley, uh, unfortunately, was put out of wrestling with a bad back. I see him often uh, 
in wintertime we play hockey together, some hockey, and he's still working out, but he cannot, uh, the doctors advise him against wrestling because he could take a bad bump, like maybe a body slam or a, a suplex and not get up again. They told me he could end up his days in a wheelchair if he wasn't careful, so he is careful. Good reason to stop wrestling. Right. Who? Well, you didn't know anything about Lou Laurent, but now you know. Yes, I do. He's a very capable young fellow. Right. He can wrestle Charlon style. He's got Charlon, which is at least, what, 30 pounds heavier, and Charlon, most of his match has been outside the ring. Are you with the fans? At the end of an evening, I doubt if Adrian Debo has a voice anymore. It's the screams he does when he's counting. You can hear him way up in the blues or way up in the white, depending upon the arena you're in. There's another variation of the sleeper put on by Louis Laurent. You know that Louis Laurent is a farmer? Didn't know that. Yes, he is. Right now, he lives in a small community outside of Montreal called Shadow Gay and but he also has a farm in Louisville. Chokehold by Charlotte. Is it a big farm, Gino? Does he get involved with It's a with pretty large farm. It's something like uh, a little over 500 acres. Ooh, that's a lot. Good sized farm. Good sized punch from Charlotte. Right. Got Lawrence now. Oh, oh, now that's a nice drop kick. Charlon can do these things. Fly through the air and hit some perfectly both feet on the jaw. And he stunned uh, Louis Laurence. What a terrific drop kick. End of the turnbuckle. And now he'll keep the demolition work going. Biting, biting him. Biting. Now he didn't have to do that. Good he had dog. the man stunned with that perfect drop kick. I don't see no reason why he should bite. Mad Dog Vashon probably told him to do it. Probably. A long time ago. Now he's really going nuts. Yeah. Now he does have the upper hand, and he's really going to town on Louis. Biting, biting again. Biting again. Biting the nose. Can't imagine being bitten in the nose. I mean, why would you do that? It may sound silly, but... A bite in the nose brings tears to your eyes, and you don't see very well after that, of course. I know, but it hits him with a thumb to the throat. Laras now in a bit of difficulty. Laras comes back with an elbow. It kind of caught Charlotte on the shoulder, though. I don't think it was that effective. Another one. Charlotte turns away from the punches, which is smart. Get into the, the corner. Buckle. Oh, and a miss by Louis Laurence, and he's down. It's hurt his arm. Hurt his arm quite a bit, actually. Charlotte moving on him. Oh, gives him that clothesline across the throat. I think he's got Louis Laurence in trouble. This could be a pile driver. A pile driver. Now, if he doesn't cover him after that, he does cover him. Let's see if he gets the pin. One, two, three. It's all over, Bob. Take Charlotte. Puts it away with a pile driver. The big man. Again, it's beaten the little man. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us here on International Championship Wrestling. Don't forget to tune in next week as we bring you a tag team match featuring French and Martin and Matt Dog Lefebvre, Dominic Danucci, and Sailor Moondog White versus Rick Martel. Thanks, and don't forget to tune in next week.